Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel. Hope all is well. And we're going to bring you some Legends of Boxing PC game Fight Night from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, PA. Main event, Smoking Joe Frazier versus Jimmy Young in an all-Philly clash. 12 rounds for the vacant North American heavyweight title. Also on the card... Son of Smoking Joe, Marvis Frazier, looks to vanquish Jimmy Ellis, a two-time loser to Smoking Joe in reality, but now Jimmy has other ideas of revenge against the Fla Frazier clan. But up first, Dwayne Bobbick, managed by Smoking Joe Frazier, looks to take out a newcomer to our promotions, PA's own Michael Moore. Thursday night fights from the Spectrum are here, and it's fight time. So let's take a look at our first bout. Joining us at ringside, SDG Replays. Check out that wonderful channel. He had some Legends of Boxing up on his channel. Also, I believe um, I saw he put up a video of Pocket Pennant Run, Card and Dice Baseball. That's SDG Replays. Happy New Year. So our first bout is going to be Dwayne Bobbick, ranked 12th in our universe. Comes off that decision win over Taylor Philo Stevenson. Michael Moore, ranked 89th, but he makes his debut. So let's quickly look at Mr. Bobbick. Here's Dwayne. In our universe, he's 1-0. He upset the heavily favored Tail Philo Stevenson by split decision. And now he looks to continue his winning ways and take out Michael Moore. To the preview we go. Dwayne Bobbick fighting out of the Frazier camp, originally from Little Falls, Minnesota, but now fighting out of Philadelphia, PA. Overall record in reality, 48-4-0 with 42 stoppages in our universe, 1-0. Takes on Michael Moore from Monison, Pennsylvania. Overall record, 52-4-1 with 40 by stoppage. Dwayne Bobbick is a pressure fighter. So is Michael Moore. Dwayne Bobbick and Michael Moore will have an even control value as they're both sixes against pressure fighters. So it's going to go off the 20-sided die roll. Bobbick's punching power is a seven. Moore's punching power is a five. Bobbick's defense a one. Moore's defense is a two. Bobbick's considered a clean fighter. When it comes to dirty tactics, Michael Moore is an average fighter when it comes to fouling. Bobbick never fights elusive. 1 through 6 on the outside, 7 through 14 on the inside, 15 through 20, pressure. Michael Moore, a 1 and a 2, he's elusive. He'll work behind that southpaw jab. 3 through 13 outside, 14 and 15 inside, 16 through 20, he brings the pressure. Michael Moore's endurance is 18. Dwayne Bobbick's endurance is 14. Dwayne Bobbick's handicap, he's a slow starter. Plus two to his control factor, so Michael Moore has a chance to strike and strike early. Michael Moore's uh, will, no penalty for knockdowns as he recovers quite well. So here we go, 10 rounds, heavyweights, first bout of a three-fight card from the Philadelphia Spectrum. It is a packed house here at the Spectrum in Philly. Main event, remember, Joe Frazier, Jimmy Young, 12 rounds for the vacant North American Boxing Federation Heavyweight Championship. Up next after Bobbick and Moore, Young Marvis Frazier against Jimmy Ellis. To center ring we go. Bobbick out of the red corner. Michael Moore out of the blue corner. Referee is Dave Gardner. And you can see... Bobbick with the slow starter trait plus two, so his defense, I mean his control factor, excuse me, is a 12. 
So Moore will have an advantage for the first two rounds. Here we go. Instructions have been given. They go back to their corners. They await the bell. And round one is on its way. Bobic bringing the pressure. Moore meets him at ring center. Bobic fires away. And he lands a hook to the body. Bobic again stays in tight, trying to move Michael Moore back. Bobic double hook to the body. Left, right. He's trying to wear down the southpaw. The southpaw stance ineffective on the inside. And now they tie up. Referee Gardner breaks them. About 155 to go here in round number one. There's a good toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Even exchange, but Bobic is letting his hands go. He continues to bring the pressure. Michael Moore lands a right jab and a left cross. Remember, he is a southpaw. Here comes Michael Moore. He's opening up as he hooks to the body. And he lands again the straight left to the head. Michael Moore coming on strong late in this round. Bangs the body. Bobbitt comes back with a left and a right to the jaw of Michael Moore. He felt that. Moore backs up. 30 seconds left. Moore looking to fight. Coming forward and he lands a big combination on Dwayne Bobbitt. Three punch salvo by Michael Moore. Seven seconds left. Moore punching at the bell and he lands the right jab and the left cross. A good action-packed round here at the Spectrum to start off the fisticuffs. That was a close, close round. Bobic loses five endurance points. Michael Moore, four. Bobic down to nine. Moore down to 14. I think that was an even round. The ringside scorer gave it to Michael Moore, 10-9. Bobic, for a slow starter, came out pretty well in that round. At ringside, SD, SDG replays, Jim L., hope all is well, my friend, and D. Scott Howard, the Goat Whisperer. Here we go, round two, scheduled for ten. Bobic lands just below the belt line. Referee Gardner lets it go. Moore comes right back, winging rights and lefts. Bobic ducks underneath. Bobic looks with the counter. Comes up with a right and a left hook. Good job by Dwayne Bobic. Bobic gets inside on Moore, trying to push him back a bit. And there's a double left hook. One to the body and one to the head. Toe to toe exchange. Bobic got the better of it. Bobic got the better of it. Shorter, crisper punches, snapping the head of Michael Moore. Moore did score, but Bobbitt got the better of it. Bobbitt with a right, left, right, all to the head of Michael Moore. Moore is in trouble. Moore staggers back into the ropes. Dwayne Bobbitt looks for the kill. Bobbitt opens up. He is nailing Michael Moore. Referee Gardner looking on. Moore not responding. Bobbitt looks to land, and he lands on the ropes again. Moore tries to fight his way off the ropes. Moore in trouble. His legs don't look there. Again, they bang away, but Bobbitt keeps him pinned on those ropes as he works the body and up to the head. Michael Moore now lands a beautiful right uppercut at the bell, snapping the head of Dwayne Bobbitt. But that was a huge round for Bobbitt. A big, big round for Dwayne Bobbitt. Joe Frazier can be seen watching the screen from the dressing room, very happy with his young protege. Remember, young Marvis will fight after this against Jimmy Ellis. We give that round to Bobbick. We have it one even, one for Bobbick. The ringside scorer has it one for more, one for Bobbick. Bobbick down to five endurance points. Michael Moore, nine. In the Moore corner, Emmanuel Stewart really... Trying to tell him, be first, be first. Round three, scheduled for ten, and it's Dwayne Bobbitt coming right out at Michael Moore. Michael Moore trying to stay behind that southpaw jab, but Bobbitt works his way in, jabbing to the body and landing an overhand right. Michael Moore blinks, but there's no blood. Both fighters faint, but don't fire. 2.19 to go here in the round. Michael Moore behind the jab, and there is the left cross! And Bobbitt buckles. Bobbitt buckles. He tries to hold on. Moore pushes him away. Moore looks to bang, and he wings wildly with hooks. Bobbitt was able to evade. Both fighters wing punches and miss. Bobbitt, it was an overhand right. Moore was an overhand left. Michael Moore, southpaw jab. Two of them lands on Bobbitt. 
43 seconds to go in round three. Bobbitt gets inside, bangs the left to the body and a chopping right hand to the head of Michael Moore. Bobbitt stays in tight and Bobbitt bangs. He rakes the body with left, right, left. Good hooks to the body. Bobbitt cannot get in and he is caught moving forward by the right jab and a left cross. I give that round to Bobbitt. Bobbitt, a little huffing and puffing now. As we're through three rounds, only two endurance points left for Dwayne Bobbitt. Michael Moore has seven. I have Bobbitt up two rounds with one even. The ringside scorer has a 2-1 Michael Moore. So we're in a disagreement there. Round four is upon us. Eddie Futch is in the Bobbitt corner. Frazier watching from the back as he prepares for the main event. 12 rounds for the North American Heavyweight Championship against <clears throat> Jimmy Young, another Philly native. Here we go, round four. And there's the bell, and Michael Moore comes out from distance, and it's a good one, two, three combination. Right jab, left cross, right hook, all to the head of Bobbick, who presses forward. Bobbick now gets in tight, and he looks to bang, and he does. Left hook to the body, and a right uppercut snaps the head of Michael Moore. Emmanuel Stewart from the Moore corner screaming, get at distance. Moore heeds the advice and lands two right-handed jabs upon Dwight, uh, Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick moves in and he bangs the body with hooks. Bobbick moves forward and he's met by punches. A right-left, again, Moore a southpaw. Moore continues to work that southpaw jab. Two stinging jabs snap the head of Bobbick who tries to stay low, but he's caught. Bobbick moves in, and Bobbick is caught with a left and a right hook. Bobbick blinking, and he has a slight abrasion. No, it's blood. Blood near the left eye. Blood near the left eye of Dwayne Bobbick. 30 seconds left in round four. Michael Moore looking to open up, and there's the right jab and a left cross. Moore looking to punch at the bell, and both fighters throw and miss. You can see Bobbick blinking and that blood that blood is irritating Bobbick as he goes back to his corner they quickly sit him on the stool and they'll go to work on that cut near the left eye Bobbick breathing quite heavily now after four rounds control factor goes up and that's not good power goes down to a three a four and defense down to a one which I believe it was already Michael Moore starting to really look sharp here had some trouble. We give that round to Michael Moore, so we have it 2-1-1 for Bobbick. The ringside score has it 39-37 Moore. Round 5 scheduled for 10. There's the bell. And a tired Bobbick gets off his stool and he presses forward against Michael Moore. Moore again behind that jab. A good right jab and a left hook to the body and then up to the head and now blood is coming from the nose of Dwayne Bobbick excellent combination a bloody Bobbick bores in and Bobbick bangs with hooks but he misses he misses Moore was able to parry away those punches no counter Moore behind the jab again two good jabs looking to set up that straight left it is a lethal punch for Michael Moore Bobbick works his way in, and he breaks the body and up to the head with left, right, left, right. Two to the body and two to the head. They were all hooks. Bobbick continues to punch. There's the jab. It's a short jab and a good scoring cross. That snaps the head of the southpaw, Michael Moore. Moore comes right back with a left cross and a right hook to the body. Under a minute to go here in an action-packed round five. Bobbick. Tries to get in low, and his head is snapped up by an uppercut, and then the right hook. Moore punching away. Misses Bobbick. Bobbick shoves Moore off balance, but Moore throws punch. Oh, he caught Bobbick! He caught Bobbick at the bell! Moore was pushed off balance, but quickly retained balance and fired away with a three-punch salvo. Two of them missed, but the last... Right hook landed square on the jaw of Bobbick, and Bobbick goes gingerly back to his corner. We prepare for round six. Eddie Futch really working hard in that corner to revive Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick 
Fresh off the upset of Talo Philo Stevenson, looking to continue his winning ways here at the Spectrum, his new home away from home, as he is part of the Frazier clan. Here we go, round number six. Joining us at ringside, Kurt Berglund. Check out that wonderful channel. He's very close to a thousand subs, so please, if you have not subscribed, please do so. He has a lot of. He just has a new boxing video up. Uh, I haven't. I've got to listen to it. It's Jerry Quarry and Joe Bugner. Very interesting matchup using Glory Days Boxing. A fine game. My favorite tabletop sports game, period. Uh, and he also has a lot of different varieties of tabletop baseball games. And I think Pocket Pennant Run should be giving Kurt Berglund a little piece of the pie because he's in introduced that game to many, many folks. And we hope to have Kurt Berglund on chat with Al very soon and possibly with some of the folks from Pocket Pennant Run also. Here we go. Round six, scheduled for ten. It seems like Michael Moore is taking control of this bout. And Michael Moore lands low. And referee Dave Gardner gives him a strong warning. And there's a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Ring center. Both fighters working behind the jab from distance. But it's Moore first. And the right jab and left cross again find the range. They score on Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick, slow of head movement, gets rat -a tatted with a three-punch combination. Right jab, left cross, right hook, snapping the head of Bobbick. Bobbick looks to come back and throw big punches, and he does. Right cross, left hook. Moore blinks. There's no blood. Both fighters wing big punches and miss. We have under a minute to go here in round six. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, grazing shots, but scoring shots. Here's Bobbick. Bobbick faints, but it's Michael Moore who throws, and Bobbick is able to dodge that cross, but there is no retaliation from Dwayne Bobbick. Final seconds of round six, and it's Bobbick. Jab and a right hand catches Moore at the bell. And again, Moore goes blinking back to his corner. Some swelling, but nothing unusual, just the normal wear and tear in a pugilistic fisticuff contest. That was a tough round to score, in my opinion. I give it to Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick very tired. Michael Moore is still with one endurance point and a slight edge in control. Moore now has the edge in power. Round seven is upon us. Let's go to the ringside scorer unofficially. The ringside scorer has Michael Moore, 59. Dwayne Bobbick, 55. We have it. I think we still have it a one-point edge for Bobbick. Round 7. Scheduled for 10. Remember, Marvis Frazier, Jimmy Ellis up next in the main event. Papa Joe, Smoking Joe Frazier. 12 rounds for the vacant North American Heavyweight Championship. That's the North American Boxing Federation version. Against another Philly fighter, Jimmy Young. Round 7. And it's Bobbick who takes control on the inside, and Bobbick bangs a left hook to the body and a short right hand to the head. Michael Moore tries to keep his distance. There's the southpaw jab, snapping the head of Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick cannot get in tight. Moore moves away. Bobbick behind the jab. Faints, gets in, and he bangs! Right cross, left hook to the body. Good job by Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick taking his time trying to come in. We have about a minute to go here in round seven. Bobbick working well on the inside. He bangs away with a three-punch salvo. Short hooks, left, right, left. The final left hook to the head. The first two to the body of Michael Moore. And a beautiful toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange from Bobbick was the crisper puncher there. And Moore backs up. Moore blinking. Bobbick advances. Bobbick looking to land. He loads up with the uppercut and tags Michael Moore and then digs a right to the body. And there is the bell. Michael Moore doesn't know what hit him. Those shots look to have drained the confidence of Michael Moore. He goes back to the stool. Emmanuel Stewart says, you got to let your hands go, Mike. Bobbick breathing heavy but reaching down deep. Can he pull off this upset? Moore, he too is breathing heavy. A bit of anxiety in his eyes now after that good Bobbick round. Round 8, scheduled for 10. There's the bell, and Michael Moore quickly takes control with his jab. And there is the left cross! 
and Bobak staggers. He tries to grab onto Michael Moore. Moore pushes him away. Moore looking to load up, and there's a clean salvo snapping the head of Bobak, who goes back into the ropes. Bobak seems defenseless. Moore pouring it on. He is punching and punching. Dave Gardner looking on. Referee Gardner, but it's Bobak fighting off the ropes with a left hook to the head and a right to the body. Bobak still on the ropes. His legs don't seem to be there. Moore catches him with a left cross. Bobak looks to punch back, bangs away at the body. Moore measuring with the jab. Bobak staying on those ropes. And Moore measures with the right jab and lands a, le a right hook to the body. Michael Moore and a beautiful three punch salvo. Bobak still on those ropes. Now they clash heads. And there is the bell. No cuts, no cuts from that clash of heads. Excellent round for Michael Moore. Bobak bleeding from the cut near the left eye. His nose continues to bleed. They quickly work on those abrasions. Michael Moore sits on his stool. A tired Michael Moore, but now a little bit more confident. Let's go to the ringside score. We have Michael Moore ahead now. The ringside score has always had Michael Moore ahead, 78-74. Six more minutes of boxing. Can Dwayne Bobbick pull off something big here? His power now drops to a 3. Control up to a 12. Moore's power drops to a 3. Defense down to a 1. Here we go, round 9. Both fighters from distance, but it's Michael Moore first. Right jab, left cross, and Bobbick is stunned. Bobbick starts to back up a bit. Moore looking to open up. Bobbick in trouble. Moore bangs the body. Bobbick's got to do something here. Moore's letting his hands go. Left, right, left. As he switches up. And both fighters faint, but it's Bobbick near the ropes. Bobbick trying to fight off the ropes. And there's a right cross and a left to the body. The right cross was at the head of Michael Moore, but Moore continues to paw with the right jab. Both fighters now faint, and now Bobic slides away from the ropes. Under a minute to go here in round nine. Bobic on unsteady legs. Bobic fires the right cross. That lands, and a grazing left to the body. Moore steps in, and Bobic clinches for dear life. Referee Gardner breaks them. 14 seconds left in round nine. And Michael Moore opens up, snapping the head of Dwayne Bobic. And the bell, the bell really saved Bobic there. Referee Gardner looked like he was right about to step in and stop the bout. In our eyes, if Michael Moore stands up, he wins this bout by decision. Bobbick is in a world of trouble. After nine rounds, action-packed rounds, Michael Moore has just been the busier fighter. And uh, both fighters have rattled one another, but Moore has been the busier fighter. Doesn't mean that Bobbick hasn't thrown his share of punches. The ringside scorer unofficially has Michael Moore up by three points, 87-84. We have it slightly closer, but we still have Michael Moore ahead. I think we only have Moore up by two points. <clears throat> Round 10. Both fighters off their stool ring center. Referee Dave Gardner says good luck as he looks deeply into Bobbick's eyes. Bobbick wants to go. He told referee Gardner that in the corner. Here's the bell for the final three minutes. Bobbick is exhausted. Moore is tired. Who's going to dig down deeper? Here it is. Three minutes. There's the bell. It's Michael Moore throwing and he's landing. And Bobbick is in a world of hurt. Michael Moore lands a three-punch salvo, le a right jab, left cross, right hook, all to the head of Bobbick. Bobbick looks to fire back, and he does with a four-punch combination. Not a lot on those punches, but it stops the onslaught for the moment for Michael Moore. Both fighters from distance. Both fighters wing and miss. Oh, Michael Moore goes to the Franks and Beans there. Referee Gardner admonishes Moore, gives Dwayne Bobbick a moment. 
Bobic says he's a okay. Referee Gardner lets that go. Oh, two big hooks by Michael Moore, snapping the head of Dwayne Bobic. Bobic backs to the ropes. Referee Gardner looking on. Bobic looks to fight off the ropes. Left hook, right cross, and Moore is down. Michael Moore is down. The count has reached four, five, six. Moore slowly gets up. He'll take the mandatory eight count. Holy cow, Dwayne Bobic fights his way off the ropes, dropping Michael Moore with a left hook and a right cross. Dwayne Bobic goes for the kill. He is now pouring it on Michael Moore in these final seconds. And that is it. We're going to go to the judges. What a turnaround of events here in round 10. Michael Moore goes down, was almost counted out. And it was Michael Moore who had Bobic pinned to the ropes was going for the kill. Bobic with a left hook to the head and a crushing right cross dropped Michael Moore into the ropes and down to the canvas. He does beat the count, but at the end, it was Dwayne Bobic battering Michael Moore on the ropes. Holy cow. We have it a draw. Our card, my card, has it a draw with that knockdown. That's a 10-8 round. <clears throat> and we only had more up by two. Let's go to the ringside score. He has it close also. Michael Moore, 95-94. Can Dwayne Bobbick pull off another miracle upset? As Kurt Berglund from ringside says, my goodness, is it a draw? What an unbelievable first bout here at the Spectrum. Remember, up next, Marvis Frazier against Jimmy Ellis. Jimmy Ellis looking for some revenge against the Frazier clan. In reality, Jimmy Ellis lost twice via knockout to Joe Frazier. The second time, he was stopped. They fought, I believe the fight was in Australia. Wow! So the ringside judges' scorecards have been collected. The commission's gone over it with referee Dave Gardner. He now hands it over to the ring announcer. We await the decisions from the judges. Holy cow! What a wild brawl! <clears throat> we are ready for the official result. We have a unanimous decision, 95-94, 95-94, 96-93. The winner by unanimous decision, Michael Moore. And a throng of boos pour out here at the Spectrum. As they felt Dwayne Bobbick pulled it out in the end. But Michael Moore beats the 10 count. And has a successful debut in our Legends of Boxing universe. 95-94, 95-94, 96-93. I feel that's a bit excessive. I can see the 95-94. I had Bobic winning 95-94. So I could see it the other way, 95-94. But Michael Moore, 96-93. I can't see that, but Michael Moore is victorious. Dwayne Bobbick almost pulls it off at the end. JVD Studios has joined us. You only missed the first bout, my friend. We have two more to come. Marvis Frazier, Jimmy Ellis, 10 rounds heavyweights. Then the main event, Papa Joe, smoking Joe Frazier against Jimmy Young, 12 rounds for the North American Boxing Federation heavyweight title. The winner could be in line for a shot against Gene Tunney or possibly Sonny Liston. Liston up next for Tunney. Tunney might take a uh, might take a what's the word I'm looking for? Liston is the mandatory, but Tunney might be able to fight, take his own contender before the mandatory. So there you have it. Very close fight. Dwayne Bobbick has not 
has done really well uh, against two fighters that he probably sh shouldn't have beat anyway. So Marvis Frazier, Jimmy Ellis. Ellis making his first appearance in our universe. Marvis Frazier has been one of our favorite fighters, very active. And let's go to Marvis. Let's take a look at Marvis Frazier real quick. Marvis Frazier, 2-1-0 with 1-K-O. His last fight, a hard fight versus Jess Willard. Very close, but Marvis was knocked out with 59 seconds uh, fifty-nine seconds into... 59 seconds left, excuse me, in round 9. But it was a very close fight. We'll just show you that real quick. You can see 76-75 Willard... Even on the second judge in 76-75, Marvis Frazier. But Jess Willard landed that hellacious uppercut to knock out Marvis. He's defeated Mark Gastineau by TKO in seven. And then Butterbean on points. So here we go. Big fight for Marvis coming off that knockout loss. To the former heavyweight champion Jess Willard, who then in turn took on Sonny Liston in an unsuccessful attempt to rip the USBA title away from Liston. Marvis' overall record in reality 19 2 0 with eight stoppages. He is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he'll take on the sparring partner of Muhammad Ali, Jimmy Ellis, 40 12 1 with 24 stoppages, making his debut in our Legends of Boxing universe. Marvis Frazier has 22 endurance points. Jimmy Ellis only 15. Marvis Frazier is a pressure fighter. Ellis is a tactician. So Frazier against a tactician is a 7 control. Jimmy Ellis against a pressure fighter is a 7 control. So their control factor is even Stevens. They'll go off the 20-sided die roll. Marvis Frazier, not much of a punch, only two for the power. Jimmy Ellis, slightly better with a three. Marvis Frazier's defense is a two. Jimmy Ellis's defense is a three. Marvis Frazier, um, chin and will, minus two versus higher control. But since it's even, that will not take effect. Jimmy Ellis has no special traits. Here we go. Back to ring center at the Spectrum. Marvis Frazier has made his way into the ring, and so has Jimmy Ellis. Angelo Dundee in the Jimmy Ellis corner. Eddie Futch in the Marvis Frazier corner. Papa Joe did come out, give him a big hug and kiss now back, and got a huge round of applause as he goes back to the dressing room to prepare for the main event. Frazier also is seen speaking to Dwayne Bobbick, giving him encouragement. Fighters ring center as referee Dave Gardner goes over the instructions. Both fighters nod their heads. They understand what's low and what is not low and what will be tolerated. Referee Gardner asks any questions from the chief seconds. There are no questions from the chief seconds. Fighters back to their corners. Marvis in the blue cor uh, red corner. Jimmy Ellis in the blue corner. Round one is upon us. Scheduled for ten. Jimmy Ellis desperately wants to take revenge on young Marvis. Papa Joe knocked out Jimmy Ellis twice in real life. Round one. Scheduled for ten. And it's Jimmy Ellis bringing it to Marvis Frazier. Frazier stands his ground. Ellis works a hook to the body and a right uppercut to the head of Marvis Frazier. Ellis continues to punch. Now lands a chopping right hand and another left hook to the body. Ellis punching away. Frazier inside but not throwing. And again he goes to the left hook and right uppercut. That has been a good combination for Jimmy Ellis. 143 to go here in round one. It's been all Jimmy Ellis. And Ellis lands a chopping right hand, left hook, and another right hand. Frazier backs up for a second, now moves forward, but he moves into the fist of Jimmy Ellis. There's a left jab and a right cross. 
Frazier blinks but continues to move forward. Frazier is hit. Frazier dips and dives, comes up throwing. He lands a chopping right hand. First punch landed by Marvis. So far, an excellent round for Jimmy Ellis. He has let his hands flow freely. We have under a minute to go here in round 10, and it's all Jimmy Ellis as he rakes the body, then comes up to the head, everything working off the jab, though. 30 seconds to go, Ellis... Oh! A left hook to the body and up to the head, snapping the jaw of Marvis Frazier. Final moments here. Of round number one, Frazier looks to come back, but he misses with his shots. A very, very excellent round for Jimmy Ellis. Marvis Frazier was battered from pillar to post. Ellis did everything but knock down Marvis. Round two. Eddie Futch says, let's start working that jab. Let him walk into something. Angelo Dundee says, go get him. He's got nothing. Here we go. So Ellis will press on the inside. Frazier looks from distance. Both fighters land. Frazier caught Ellis moving forward, but Ellis continued to punch. Frazier looking for the jab. He throws the jab in the right hand. And he misses. Good defense by Ellis. Ellis looks to come back on the inside. He bangs a left hook to the body and a short right hand to the head of Marvis Frazier. Frazier. Oh, he took a shot on the inside. On the belt line. Referee Gardner says belt line. It's good. Now they tie up. Frazier trying to catch his breath. Ellis trying to muscle him. Referee Gardner pries him apart. They faint but don't fire. Under a minute to go here in round two. Frazier from the jab. Two jabs and then a right hook to the body of Jimmy Ellis. Frazier moves away. Ellis pursues. Ellis now throws. And that is a beautiful combination. Left hook to the body. Right uppercut to the head of Marvis Frazier. Under 15 seconds to go. And an Ellis with a left right. And there's the bell. And there is blood near the right eye of Marvis Frazier as he goes back to the stool. They will work on that cut near the right eye. It looks like it's under the right eye. Back-to-back -back rounds for Jimmy Ellis. He is looking sharp. He is really punishing young Marvis. Taking out what Joe Frazier took out upon him twice in reality. Let's go to the ringside scorer. Wow, he gave Jimmy Ellis a 10-8 round without a knockdown in round one and a 10-9 round in round two. I gave Jimmy Ellis both rounds one and two, but by 10-9. So I have Ellis up by two points. The ringside score has Ellis up by three. Again, round one was a huge round for Ellis, but there was no knockdown. Eddie Futch wants... Marvis to be first. Marvis will apply the pressure on the inside. Jimmy Young been very comfortable on the inside. He'll continue to work there. And it's Jimmy Young being first. And again, he digs that left hook to the body in the right uppercut, snapping the head of young Marvis Frazier. Ellis lands on the belt line. Ellis continues to punch away. Left hook, right hook. On the inside to the body of Marvis Frazier. Frazier just not throwing. Both fighters grapple. They do not land. Now they tie up. Referee Gardner says fight out of it. They're working the free hand. Now referee Gardner breaks them. 107 left here in round three. It's been all Jimmy Ellis. And Ellis rakes the body and goes up to the head. Left right to the body. Left right to the head. Beautiful hooks by Jimmy Ellis. Ellis stays in tight. And that one is low. That one is low. Referee Gardner admonishes Jimmy Ellis. 22 seconds to go here in round three. Another round of dominance for Jimmy Ellis as he bangs the hooks to the body. Ellis looks to fire, but this time Marvis is first as he doubles up with the left hook. One to the body and one to the jaw of Jimmy Ellis. We've given three rounds to Ellis. Frazier down to... 11 endurance points. Ellis down to 6. 
seems like Marvis Frazier has no answer for a very aggressive Jimmy Ellis. Ellis has taken the fight in these first three rounds to Marvis Frazier. Round four, Ellis will continue to bring the fight to Frazier, pressing Frazier. Frazier looks to work behind the jab, but it's Jimmy Ellis being first. He continues to bang that body and bang it hard. Ellis inside Frazier. No escape. Double left hook for Jimmy Ellis. As he goes a la smoking Joe. Rib cage and jaw of Marvis Frazier. Ellis continues to bang. Right hook to the body. Left hook to the head. Chopping right hand to the head of Frazier. Frazier tries to move away. Ellis pursues. And Frazier left jab right hook. Snapping the head of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis blinks, but there is no blood. That was the best combination so far by Marvis Frazier. But he is woefully down. And there it is! Toe-to-toe -to -toe combination. Jimmy Ellis got the better of it. Frazier needs a throw. Frazier with a jab in the right hand. Catches Ellis moving forward. But Ellis comes right back. Digs the body with a left and then the right uppercut splits the guard of Frazier, but grazes his forehead. Ellis continues to punch, backing Frazier up, banging the body and up to the head. Excellent hooks by Jimmy Ellis. Ellis has Frazier trapped on the ropes. Ellis with the jab and the right cross. And there is the bell. Marvis Frazier has no answer for a very, very aggressive Jimmy Ellis, the man from Louisville, Kentucky, sparring partner of Muhammad Ali. It has been all Jimmy Ellis. Quite shockingly, he has pressed the young Marvis Frazier, and it is Frazier trying to box Jimmy Ellis. At ringside, we have Sox Arizona. Check out that wonderful YouTube channel for all your Celtics and Red Sox chat and game live game chat as well as music and other things. Sports Time Machine is here. Our good friend, Mr. Utah Mike, please check out that wonderful channel and subscribe. Of course, subscribe to Kirk Berglund and D. Scott Howard. We also have Jim L. and SDG Replays, another fine YouTube content creator. So five rounds in the books. I'm sorry, four rounds in the books. We have them all for Jimmy Ellis. The ringside scorer gave round three to Marvis Frazier. We have Ellis in complete control. Round five, scheduled for ten. And again, Jimmy Ellis pressing Marvis. Marvis can't keep Ellis off of him. Ellis easily works in on Jimmy. I'm sorry, Marvis, and bangs away with the body with hooks. Frazier looking to work behind the jab. He throws the jab, he misses, throws the right hook, and he misses. No retaliation by Ellis. Ellis moves forward, hands down. Marvis wings a right, right, right cross. That misses once again. Ellis looking to walk Marvis into a punch, it looks like. But Marvis is letting his hands go. This time he jabs to the body and then lands... A right hook to the head of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis continues to press forward. Marvis starts to catch him. There's the one-two. A good left jab and a right cross. Snapping Jimmy Ellis's head. And now they clash heads as Ellis really came in aggressively. Referee Gardner looks at both heads. No blood. No swelling. Frazier back behind that jab. Throws a one-two. Ellis parries them away. No combination in retaliation. Now Ellis throws, and Frazier dips underneath, but doesn't fire back. We have 11 seconds to go here in round five, and there's the bell. Neither fighter threw at the bell. That was a slower-paced round. Frazier might have stole that one. Frazier tiring quickly. Ellis now fatigued. Frazier well behind on our scorecards. Well behind. Ellis' defense drops to a two. His power drops to a two. Now Ellis, feeling he has a comfortable lead. Angelo Dundee says now work that jab and bring, bring this point victory home. If he goes, he goes, but let's win this thing on decision. We got it in the bag. In the Marvis Frazier corner, Eddie Futch says, you got to do something big, Marvis. You got to do something big. Let's go to the ringside score. 
Ringside scorer has it closer than we have it. The ringside scorer only has Jimmy Ellis up by two, 48 46. Round six, scheduled for 10. And it's Marvis Frazier being first with the jab. He throws the left and the right. Here's the counter. Oh, a good one, two back by Jimmy Ellis. It's scoring blows, nothing really on them, but they scored. Now Ellis works behind the jab and lands a right cross. Ellis on his toes. Marvis on the outside trying to get in and out. Art Marvis gets in punching range, lands the right cross, misses the left hook to the body. Marvis again throws. There's the right cross, but this time the left hook digs the rib cage of Jimmy Ellis. Marvis trying to get in a rhythm. Now Ellis takes him right out of it with two jabs and a right hand splattering Marvis Frazier in the face. You can see the blood. Blood continues to flow near the right eye. Frazier comes back with a right hand and a left hook to the body, grazing punches. Ellis looks to punch. Lead right hand by Jimmy Ellis. He fainted with the jab, moving Frazier right into that right hand. 36 seconds to go in round six. Close round. Frazier looks to bang. Throws to the body. He lands. There's the counter. One, two, three by Jimmy Ellis. 12 seconds to go. Frazier comes right back, but he misses the overhand right and the left hook. They were intended for the jaw of Jimmy Ellis. Six rounds in the bank. We have Ellis in complete control unofficially. Bud W has joined us at ring size. Left hook, Marvis. Left hook. Bud W calling for the left hook. The Papa Joe smoking Joe left hook. That twice departed the senses of Jimmy Ellis in reality. Well, the ringside scorer has it closer than we have it. Frazier's only down one. We have Frazier down three. So a little discrepancy be between myself and the ringside scorer. Round seven. There's the bell. Scheduled for ten. Frazier on the inside. Frazier. There it is. Bud W was calling for it. Double left hook. One to the rib cage. One to the jaw. Then a chopping right hand. To the jaw of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis trying to work the jab. Ellis faints. Right hand, left hook, right hand. And Frazier is down. Frazier is down. The count has reached three, four, five. Frazier starts to get up. He'll take the mandatory eight count from referee Dave Gardner. Gardner wipes off his gloves. Gardner wipes off his gloves, looks into his eyes says, do you want to go? Marvis says, yes. Marvis, way down. Jimmy Ellis looking for the kill. He ratatats Frazier. Nothing really on those punches. Again, he ratatats Frazier, but nothing on those punches. Frazier seems to have regained some sense of balance. And there is the right cross left hook landing on Jimmy Ellis. But Frazier needs to do more of it. And Frazier digs a left to the body and a right uppercut, snapping through the guard of Jimmy Ellis. Frazier punching madly now. There's a double left hook. One to the rib cage and one to the side of the cranium of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis backs up. Frazier pursues his prey. To think it was just Frazier who was down moments ago. And Frazier is on the attack. Frazier winds up with a left and a right and he misses. 12 seconds ago in round seven. Frazier firing away as he bangs the body and up to the head. He had Jimmy Ellis trapped on the ropes. You wouldn't have funk it that it was Marvis down earlier in the round, but it was. He will need a knockout to win in our eyes. Maurice Tutupu has joined us. Hope all is well. Uh, he says if Fri in the, he's talking about the main event. If Frazier doesn't get Young within six or seven rounds, Young takes a decision. I like where your head's at. I was thinking something similar. 
So Frazier now down 64 uh, 67 64 10 8 rounds jimmy ellis has scored two 10 8 rounds in round one totally dominating frazier but no knockdown in round seven he dropped frazier as we just witnessed i have ellis well ahead now with the second 10 8 round i didn't give him a 10 8 round in the first mind you but i have ellis up by five points Marvis Frazier is fatigued. Ellis went fatigued a few rounds ago. Again, their control factors are both 11s now, so it'll go off the 20-sided die roll. Marvis's power is down to a 1. He'll, near, he, he'll need a miracle. Round 8. It's all Jimmy Ellis, and it's Marvis coming out after Ellis. Ellis trying to work the jab. Marvis bangs the body with a left hook, then up to the head. Marvis continues to punch. Straight jab and a right to the body. Of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis faints but doesn't fire. Frazier pursues. Ellis circles. Both fighters land. Toe to toe exchange. Neither got the better of it. Ellis behind the jab. Hooks to the body. Good job by Jimmy. Angelo Dundee in the Ellis corner says, Box his brains out. You have this decision. And that's what Ellis is trying to do. Ellis fainted the jab and landed a grazing cross as Frazier walked into it. Frazier gets inside, and Frazier bangs with a left hook and a chopping right hand to the side of the head of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis blinks, but there is no blood. 30 seconds to go in round eight. Ellis looks to fire. Right cross, left hook, right cross. Frazier backs up. Ellis throwing at the bell as he opens up with another three-punch salvo, but the only punch that landed cleanly was the right cross. Three more minutes for Marvis Frazier. To pull a miracle out of his hat. If Jimmy Ellis stands. If Jimmy Ellis stands. He will win a decision in our opinion. Jeff Ray has joined us. Says I was lucky to catch this live. And parachuted in the last rounds of the Bob McMorrow tilt. What a round 10. It was a tremendous round. Dave Little has joined us in the chat. He is the ringside physician here at the Spectrum. Check out that wonderful channel. Dave Little, please subscribe to that. We have Jimmy Ellis well ahead. The ringside scorer has Jimmy Ellis well ahead. Marvis Frazier's power is down to a one. He was never really a big puncher. I don't know. Maybe Papa Joe threw him in a little too quick after that knockout to Jess Willard. And that was a very close fight, but Willard stopped him with 58 seconds left in round nine. Here, we, I'm sorry, six minutes left in this fight. I'm ahead of myself. Round nine, and it's Frazier storming out of the corner. He digs a left to the body and up to the head of Jimmy Ellis. And now they clash heads, and Frazier has some swelling near the left eye. That's not going to help him out. And Jimmy Ellis is bleeding near the right eye. Referee Gardner has signaled it was a clash of heads. Ellis bleeding, but throwing two jabs, and he slides away from the pressing Marvis Frazier. Ellis continues to work the jab and now throws in a cross. Frazier moving forward slowly, and he's eating everything. Frazier gets in tight, bangs the body with both hands. Good job by Marvis. Marvis stays in and works. Again, he bangs the body. But Eddie farts screaming, go to the head. You got to knock him out. Now they throw and they miss. We have 30 seconds to go here in round nine. Ellis back on his horse, blinking. The blood is bothering him. And a beautiful combination by Jimmy Ellis off the jab. It was a jab and a right hand. Ellis on his toes in the final moments, and he fires two more jabs, catching Frazier cleanly. Jimmy Ellis sits on his stool. They go to work on that cut. Marvis Frazier sits on the stool. They go to work on the cut and the swelling. The cut was near the right eye, the swelling near the left eye. Angelo Dundee. Telling Jimmy, stay away, stay away. This fight is yours. Eddie Futch on the verge of possibly losing two fights tonight in the corner. A hellacious first fight with Dwayne Bobbick in which Bobbick almost pulled off the miracle with a 10th round KO. But Michael Moore stood up 
and somehow survive the battering to the shock and chagrin of the pro Bobbit crowd here at the Spectrum. Again, he is trained by Smoking Joe, well, managed by Smoking Joe Fridge. Let's go to the ringside score. 87 82 Ellis. Frazier needs a miracle. Both pugilists, swollen and battered, come to ring center. Referee Gardner's his touch gloves. Good luck. Here's the bell. Final three minutes. And it's Frazier trying to swarm Jimmy Ellis. Frazier bangs a left and a right to the body, then a left hook to the head. Not a lot of zip on those punches. Both fighters exchange at ring center. Ellis trying to stay on the outside and work behind the jab, but his legs are gone. Frazier's got to try something here. Frazier is able to stay in and bang, but Ellis bangs right back. Neither fighter with zip on their punches, but they are throwing. They're banging away at ring center. The Spectrum crowd on its feet. Frazier loads up with a left hook to the body and up to the head. Frazier giving it his all. Ellis coming back as he bangs away with a right hand and then a left uppercut. Ellis cannot keep distance. Frazier lands to the belt line. Under 30 seconds to go. Ellis, two jabs and a right hand. Frazier stops. Ellis looks to fire at the bell. And it's Jimmy Ellis banging away. And there is the bell. Jimmy Ellis puts his arms in the air, signifying victory, something he could not do against Papa Joe Frazier. But he has defeated the young Marvis, in our opinion, and in the opinion of the ringside scorer, 97-91. We had it by two more points so we had it 99 89 Ellis Frazier was down in the seventh and was battered in the first we only gave it a 10 9 round the ringside scorer gave it a 10 8 he never went down but he was battered smelly wrestling geek my legal counsel with the super chat thank you very much my friend another year and more of the same some great content from al red sox fan thank you very much sim salabim smelly wrestling geek thank you i greatly appreciate everyone's time and i hope we entertain and check out all the other wonderful content creators in the community but once again thank you very much smelly wrestling geek for the super chat it helps the channel out, helps us purchase more games, and I greatly thank you. So let's go to the scorecards. It's going to be Ellis by unanimous decision. 98-90, 97-91, and 97-92 for the winner by unanimous decision, Jimmy Ellis. So Jimmy Ellis gets some revenge against the Frazier clan, defeating young Marvis Frazier. Joe Frazier now is in the back preparing to come forward to try to take the vacant North American Boxing Federation heavyweight title. He will do battle with another Philadelphia PA fighter, but a different sort of fighter, a boxer, a slick boxer, not with much power, Jimmy Young. Frazier going into the ring knowing that Bobbick has lost his protege. Marvis Frazier has lost his son, Ken. Smoke and Joe Frazier steamroll. Can Smoke and Joe Frazier steamroll Jimmy Young? Or will Jimmy Young do to Joe Frazier what he did to George Foreman in the heat of Puerto Rico? We shall find out in moments. Richard Butler is here at ringside. Thank you very much. He says, you are a top-notch boxing announcer. Well, we like to entertain. Thank you for the kind words, Richard Butler. Sports Time Machine with a super chat. Are you guys insane? I greatly thank you. You don't have to do that, but I greatly appreciate it. As he says, for you and Pop still cutting hair in heaven somewhere. Thank you very much. Today would have been my father's 86th birthday. He's been gone for two years. So, thank you very much. That was very kind of you, our good friend Mike. So please, if you're not subscribed to our good friend Sports Time Machine, please do so. I do believe they brought back the three buttons. So if you go near the name and you click, you can go to... Oh, they didn't. I thought they did. Oh, maybe I can't do it. I do believe you can go right to the channel. 
once again, which was a great feature that they took away. But thank you very much for the Super Chat Sports Time Machine and the very kind words. I greatly appreciate it. Please check out his channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell for notification for all the fine content creators, such as Sports Time Machine, our good friend Mike, Dave Little, D. Scott Howard, the Goat Whisperer. Uh, he has a channel. He has some very fun, quick videos. <clears throat> Sox Arizona, Kurt Berglund, SDG Replays. And I also like to say hello to Jim L. JVD Studios, Maurice Tatupu. If Frazier doesn't get Young within six or seven rounds, Young takes the decision. I'm thinking that too. Jeff Ray, thank you. Richard Butler. All right, here we go. Main event. Jimmy Young and Joe Frazier have been featured on the channel. More Jimmy Young than Joe Frazier. Let's show you what they've done so far. Let's see if I remember how to do this without leaving the... Oh, I remember. I remember. We go to rankings. Let's go to Jimmy Young first. He's been the more active fighter. We have this in alphabetical order. Two fun fights. I thought Marvis would be more competitive against Jimmy Ellis. So here's Jimmy Young. Jimmy Young is 2-0-1 with one stoppage in our universe. He beat Chuck Webner via TKO by cuts in round five. He had a draw with Tommy the Duke Morrison and then came back to beat Tommy the Duke Morrison by unanimous decision quite easily, 98-93, 97-93, 99-91. So Jimmy Young looks to take the vacant. North American Boxing Federation title. Now let's go to Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier stopped Ernie Shavers in the eighth round. That's his only bout. He's ranked number 14 in our universe. The winner of this bout could be in a, could be in line for the champion Gene Tunney. Gene Tunney does have a mandatory against Sonny Liston, but he might take a fight before that. We might grant him a title defense of his cho choosing. It could be Primo Canera, possibly. So here it is, smoking Joe Frazier. Has seen Dwayne Bobbick, his protege, lose. Has seen his son lose. Can he save the day and take the North American Federation, North American Boxing Federation vacant heavyweight title? Papa Smoking Joe Frazier, Philadelphia, PA. Overall, 32, 4, and 1 with 27 stoppages. Only two men defeated Joe Frazier. George Foreman twice and Muhammad Ali twice. The draw came to... The draw was from Jumbo Cummings when Frazier made a comeback bid in 1980. Jimmy Young fought well past his prime. His prime, and he fought in an era of a lot of tough fighters, but he fought well past his prime. 35, 18, and 3 with 12 stoppages. He too is a Philadelphia PA fighter. The city of brotherly love. There'll be no love in this bout, though, between these two fighters. Joe Frazier is a pressure fighter. Jimmy Young against a pressure fighter has an 8 control. Joe Frazier against a tactician, and that's what Jimmy Young is, has a 9 control. So Frazier will have an edge of 1 in control factor. So the 20-sided die roll will be very important. Frazier, big power at 8. Jimmy Young, not much of a puncher at all. His power is a 1. Jimmy Young's endurance is a 25. His defense is a 3. Frazier's defense, even though he's a pressure fighter, is a 2. But his endurance is a 29. Frazier never, never ever fights elusive. Outside 1 through 3. Inside 4 through 12. Pressure 13 through 20. Jimmy Young fights elusive 1 through 10. Outside 11 through 19 only brings the pressure on 20. The main event, 12 rounds for the vacant North American Boxing Federation title. Our final fight 
from the Spectrum tonight, Thursday night at the fights. The Frazier clan is 0-2. Smoking Joe Frazier looks to put a win on the board. Frazier will be in the red corner. Jimmy Ellis in the blue corner. Fighters to ring center. Once again, our referee is Dave Gardner from Massachusetts. The ringside physician is Dr. David Little. We have many luminaries at ringside, such as Sports Time Machine. Please check out that wonderful YouTube channel and subscribe. Richard Butler is here, my legal counsel, Smelly Wrestling Geek. And again, thank you to Smelly Wrestling Geek and Sports Time Machine for the super chats. Greatly appreciate it. Dave Little is here. Check out his wonderful YouTube channel. Jeff Ray is at ringside. D. Scott Howard is at ringside. The Goat Whisperer. Maurice Tutupu. Bud W. <coughs> Sox, Arizona, another wonderful YouTube content creator. Kurt Berglund is at ringside. Another wonderful channel in our community. JVD Studios, check out his channel. SDG Replays, another fine content creator. Jim L, hope all is well. Here we go, main event. 12 rounds, NABF heavyweight title. Final instructions have been given. There are no questions from the chief seconds. Both fighters have touched gloves and gone back to their corners. Frazier, red corner. Jimmy Young, blue corner. Young needs to work the jab, stick, and move. Tire out, Frazier. Frazier needs to get inside and bang. This could be very much Joe Frazier, Joe Bugner. Check out that fight. That's on YouTube in reality. And that was a hell of a fight that Joe Bugner did not get enough credit for. After a further review with Steve Tower has joined us at ringside, he says, let's go, Frazier. Check out that wonderful channel. I got to catch up on some of Steve's videos. So much fun content in our community. This is a community you want to belong to. Very diverse with the games. Very diverse personalities different thoughts but we're all the same we're all pretty nice people except me i'm kind of a jerk um but other than me everyone else is cool and i'm not so bad but please check out everyone's channel subscribe i think you'll have more fun checking out the channels watching the channels listening to them in the background than you do with live real tv we're better than live real tv i'm just telling you honestly here we go round one scheduled for 12 the vacant North American Boxing Federation heavyweight title on the line. Smoking Joe Frazier and the slick boxing Jimmy Young. Here's the bell, round one. And it's Frazier coming out to press Jimmy Young. He gets inside and Frazier bangs with a left hook to the body and quickly up to the head. Snapping Young's head. No blood, no blood. Frazier again gets in tight. Double left hook again. Second one crashes the job of Young, and Young just shrugs it off and moves away. Unbelievable. But Frazier continues to press. He bangs a left and a right to the body of the elusive Jimmy Young. Young has not thrown a scoring blow. Young throws two jabs. Frazier stays low. and Young missed those jabs. Jimmy now lands a lunging right hook to the side of the ribs of Joe Frazier. He fainted with the jab. Now Young moves away. Frazier pressing, pressing, pressing. And now they clash heads. Gardner looks at them. Everything seems A-OK. -okay. Under a minute to go here in round one. Frazier continues to smoke on the inside. Frazier wings a left and a right to the head of Jimmy Young. And he misses. Young with the counter as Young digs the body with the left. And a chopping right hand to the head of Joe Frazier, but quickly gets out of dodge. Under 30 seconds to go. Young throws a jab and a right hand and misses. Frazier presses for it. Frazier bangs the body. Young comes back with a one-two. And there is the bell. Good counter by Jimmy Young, but Frazier did get his pound of flesh to the rib cage of Young. Frazier easily takes round number one. ID gesture is at ringside. His ID gesture is, everyone's nice except for Clinton. Oh, Clinton's okay. The Admiral's a good guy. 
The Admiral and I have much in common. We can both get pissy. <laughs> we do it out of love. So. <clears throat> Definitely a smoke and Joe. Oh my god! The ringside scorer has to check what he's drinking or smoking. The ringside scorer gave that round one to Jimmy Young. There's no way in H.E. double hockey sticks that Jimmy Young won that first round. Steve Tower gives it 10-9 for Frazier. I also give it 10-9 for Frazier. We are in total disagreement with this idiot scoring it at ringside. Who gives it 10-9 for Young. Round two, scheduled for 12, vacant NABF heavyweight title on the line. Frazier again gets in tight, and he lands a chopping right hand and a grazing left to the body of Young. Young continues to move away, but Frazier is able to work inside, bangs a left to the body, and an uppercut grazing the face of Young. Young cannot keep a swarming Frazier off of him as Frazier bangs the body with a left and a right. Frazier continues to punch. Left hook to the body. Up to the head was grazing, but Young really felt the blow to the rib cage. Jimmy Young lands on the belt line. 115 to go here in round number two. Jimmy Young throws a jab. Frazier easily ducks underneath. Doesn't load up at the left, though. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange at ring center. Young slides away. Young. Oh, that's the best punch! By Jimmy Young. He caught Frazier with a right cross after fainting with the jab. Can Young follow up? He's trying to follow up. He throws a left hook, a right uppercut. Both punches missed the bobbing and weaving Joe Frazier. I still give round two to Frazier. Frazier down to 23 endurance points. Jimmy Young down to 20. I'm afraid to look at the ringside scorer card. He gives the round two to Frazier. He has it even. We have Frazier up 2-0. Be interesting to see if Steve Tower gives round two to Frazier in the chat. Round three, scheduled for 12. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Neither fighter had the better of it. And again, Jimmy Ellis doesn't stick around and dodge. He gets the hell out of there. Frazier continues to press on the inside. Jimmy Ellis, I'm sorry, Jimmy Young ties up Frazier. Referee Gardner says fight out of it. Young wants no part of that. Now referee Gardner breaks them. Smoke and Joe looks to smoke. Lead right miss, left hook miss. No counter by Jimmy Young. Steve Tower, after further review with Steve Tower, also gives round two to Joe Frazier, 10-9. Frazier looks to bang. Left hook to the body, right hand to the head. Frazier cutting off the ring. Left hook to the body, right uppercut to the head. Ellis on the ro I'm Young on the ropes, lands a left right. Frazier blinking. Blinking, but the blood is not from the eye, it is from the mouth. It is from the mouth of Joe Frazier. If he starts swallowing blood, that will cause nausea. Both fighters throw and miss, but Young is able to get off the ropes. There's a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange near ring center. Both fighters landed cleanly. Frazier continues to press. We have under 15 seconds. But it's Jimmy Young who nails Frazier at the bell with a pity pat jab, but then a lunging right hook. Was it enough to have Young win the round? I say yes. I have a 2 1 Frazier. Well, the ringside scorer has a 2-1 Frazier. We just got there a different way. Round four is upon us. Eddie Futch in the Frazier corner says, continue to bang the body. His legs are going, Smoke. Smoke and Joe. His legs are going, Smoke and Joe. In the Jimmy Young corner. They want him to box, box, box. Frazier has been able to cut off the ring and get his pound of flesh over and over again. Round four, the bell. Young, two jabs, slowing down 
Frazier for the moment. Frazier presses forward. Frazier looks to land. Frazier hooks to the body. Young shoves him away and slides to his right. Frazier pursues. Young ties him up. Referee Gardner breaks them. <clears throat> Steve Tower, after three rounds, have, has Frazier up 3-0. I can see that. Frazier goes to the belt line. Referee Gardner says it's good. Young was complaining. While Young complains, Frazier punches as he goes red at tat with hooks to the rib cage. Jimmy Young back up on his bicycle. Frazier winging wildly and misses. No counter by Young. Frazier works his way in tight. Again wings wildly to the head and miss. Young needs to counter, but it's Frazier punching. There's Frazier on the inside. Left hook grazing right uppercut. It's a dangerous punch, but Frazier is within distance. Good round so far for Smoking Joe Frazier. Young ties him up, wrestles with Frazier, and there's the bell. I have it 3 1 Frazier. I would think our good friend, after further review with Steve Tower, has it 4 0 Frazier. Should we? Let's look at the ringside scorer 3 1 Frazier. Bud W. Side note. My great uncle was a barber, had a grip like no other. Oh, my dad had a strong grip. Barbers have strong grips, bud. You are correct. <clears throat> Excuse me. I miss my dad and my mom. I'll tell you this. Take it for what you want. Whether family or friends, when you see your loved ones, never be ashamed. I know we have COVID, so you have to be careful, but Aside from COVID, never be ashamed to hug and kiss your loved ones. No shame in that. And people who think that's strange, well, I think they're strange. Here we go, round five. We have it big for Frazier so far. Jimmy Young trying to change the tie to battle. Lands two stiff jabs as Frazier presses forward. Good left jabs by Jimmy Young. Frazier evades the jab. Gets inside, and there he is! Double left hook, one to the rib cage. You can see Young wince, and then up to the head, smacking Jimmy Young. Young looks to come back with his own hooks, but Frazier dips and dives out of the way, always putting pressure on Jimmy. Jimmy trying to keep him off with a good jab there, but there's no right hand behind it. Young looks to set the right hand. Now he does! Jimmy Young fainted the jab, lands the right cross, came back with a left hook and another right. He's on his toes dancing. Frazier throws and misses. Young needs to keep firing. Frazier gets in. Frazier lands, grazing shots. Young comes back with a 1-2. 25 seconds left here in round 5. Frazier pursues his prey. Jimmy Young, Frazier faints with the right. Left hook to the head! And hug! Young shrugs it off, smiles. Frazier continues to fire as he doubles with the left hook to the rib cage. And then a right to the side of the cranium of Jimmy Young. There's the bell and the end of round five. Smoke and Joe Frazier has seen Dwayne Bobick lose. He manages Bobick, a young, his young protege. He has seen his young son Marvis lose. And now... The Frazier clan desperately wanting this win, desperately wanting this North American Boxing Federation heavyweight title, which would put Joe Frazier in line for a shot at Gene Tunney. Tunney is in contract negotiations with Primo Canera. Tunney will have a, or the, well, if it's Canera, the winner of Tunney and Canera, we're not sure if it's Canera yet. The mandatory challenger is Sonny Liston, who has been a beast in our Legends of Boxing universe. Frazier, uh, 49, Young, 46. After further review with Steve Tower, has Frazier up after 5, 4 to 1. I'm in agreement. Frazier down to 12 endurance points. <clears throat> Jimmy Young, 13. So Young, even though he's been taking some shots, actually has a slight stamina advantage. As Frazier, when you fight on the inside, it takes more energy from you in this game. When you fight elusive, it takes less energy from you. 
I'm not necessarily in agreement with that all the way, but I understand it. Very fun game. I highly recommend this game on PC. Uh, tabletop, I love Glory Days Boxing. We look forward to Glory Days Boxing PC version. Right now, Glory Days Boxing, you should bring it to a tabletop near you. can be purchased at sidelinestrategies.com. Legends of Boxing PC game can be purchased at ASG Games. And if you like storytelling games, you want to go to play.com. If you don't know about play.com ga games, check out after further review with Steve Tower. He features many a play com game. Dodgeball is wicked fun to watch. <laughs> I love watching dodgeball. <laughs> Round six, scheduled for 12. Frazier up in our eyes. And it's smoking Joe Frazier. Come out smoking, banging away at the body. He wants to deaden those legs. And the way to do it is to ravage the rib cage of Jimmy Ellis. Ellis tries to keep him at bay. Lands two good, solid left jabs. Frazier presses forward, but Ellis meets Frazier with a left jab and a right hook to the head. Ellis, I, Young, I keep saying Jimmy Ellis. Young faints but doesn't fire. Frazier moves in tight, bangs the body. Now a right uppercut to the head of Jimmy Young. Young gets back to distance, but Frazier with a lead looping right hand catches Jimmy Young, and then he dug a left hook to the body. Young starting to slow down. Frazier picking up the pace. Frazier bangs the body and then up to the head. Young tries to come back. Two jabs, but no right hand by Jimmy Young. Frazier pressing for it. Frazier bangs away. Young looks to counter. And Young comes back with a solid left hook to the body and up to the head. And that stopped the onslaught of Joe Frazier. And there's the bell. Good action-packed round, but still a Frazier round in our eyes. Six rounds down, six to possibly come. Round seven is upon us. Young with a slight edge in endurance. The bell for round seven. Young misses the jabs. Frazier gets in tight. Frazier bangs the body with a left hook, and then quickly comes up to the head, smacking Young to the cranium. Young again, feints the jab, lands a right hook. Young trying to mix up his offense. As I say that, Frazier continues to bang away at the body. Young slowing down immensely. Frazier looking to catch him. Young lands on the belt line. Frazier presses forward. Frazier, right cross misses. Right cross misses. Young can he land something? There's a lead right by Jimmy. And then a hybrid left uppercut hook. Good scoring shots by Young, but he's got to put more of these combinations together. There it is. Just as I said it, Jimmy Young rat attacks Joe Frazier with a three-punch salvo. It was the jab, the right hand, and again that hybrid left hook uppercut. As Maurice Tatupu says, Jimmy Young, come on, Jimmy. Young continues to fire. Another good combination. Catching Frazier at the bell. That was a Jimmy Young round. Let's go back to Maurice Tutupu. Prediction here. A solid prediction. Maurice says, if Frazier doesn't get Young within six or seven, Young takes a decision. Will those words become reality? You can see Frazier's going to go fatigue unless something big happens here. And Young might have two rounds of stamina on Joe Frazier. So I gave the last round, again, my scorecard, Steve Towers' scorecard, and the ringside score, all unofficial. I gave the last round to, to uh, Jimmy Young, who many times I've probably called Jimmy Ellis. Bleacher Rums Gaming has joined us in the chat. Our good friend Anthony Crooks, the creator of another wonderful boxing game, my favorite tabletop game, period. And I have a lot of fun tabletop games and PC games. Glory Days Boxing, which can be purchased at sidelinestrategies.com. Bring it to a tabletop near you. After further review with Steve Tower, as it 5-2 Frazier. That's what I see it about. I might have given one more round to Young. No, I think I have it 5-2 also. 
Round eight scheduled for 12. There's the bell for round number eight. Both fighters faint but don't fire. Young has control. Young misses with the jab. Frazier presses forward. Frazier looks to bang the body. Left hook to the body, right hand to the head. Young looks to move away, but he's going to have to set down at some point on his punches. He tries, and Frazier ratatats him to the rib cage. Young desperately gets out of dodge. Frazier pursues. Frazier bangs away at the body with left hooks. It was a double left hook to the body. He didn't bring it to the head, though. And here's... Oh, there he is! Left hook to the body, right hand to the head, left uppercut to the head. Young slowing down, moves to the ropes. Frazier pursues. Young lands on the belt line. Under 30 seconds to go. Frazier banging the body as Young trapped on those ropes. Young looks to fight his way off the ropes, and he lands a 1-2, and there is the bell. Another very good round for Frazier. He'll have one endurance point left. Young d down to five. I have it 6-2 Frazier. Round nine is upon us. Here's the bell, round nine. Young has to do something huge here. Young starting to set down a little more. He lands a left hook and a right hook. Frazier looking forward to Young setting down. And Frazier wings a left and a right. He misses. Young comes back with another left hook counter. Good job by Jimmy. Frazier undeterred. Frazier bangs the body with the left and comes quickly to the head with that same left hook. Young not moving as much. More stationary from distance. Toe to toe exchange. Both fires, fighters landed equally. Frazier bangs the body and up to the head, but Young was able to roll with those punches. Young needs something. But there it is! Left hook, right hook, catching Frazier coming out of the crouch. Frazier stops for a moment, but then chugs forward. Frazier bangs the body in a grazing right uppercut, snaps the head of Jimmy Young. Young again from distance, but he's not floating like a butterfly. He's setting down on his punches. Right hand, right hand lands, but not solidly upon the cranium of Joe Frazier. Frazier, double left hook, digs the rib cage, snaps the head. Young's knees buckled for a moment, but the bell sounds. We are through nine rounds. Eddie Futch has Frazier on the stool. Frazier still bleeding from that mouth. Not much you can do with those cuts near the lip. We have Frazier well ahead. Seven to two in rounds. Joining us at ringside, Cutter Historical. Check out that wonderful YouTube channel. Lots of cool stuff on Cutter Historical's channel. It says, Stupid Driver gave me the wrong directions to the Frazier Young match. As he's also doing a title about boxing video. video. He's doing title about boxing videos for his network. And that's title about championship boxing. Another fine PC boxing game. For $13, you get every fighter in the world. Uh, went defunct in 2013, but still really well. I, I, I am getting, I'm going to get back to my heavyweight tournament using that. Bleacher Bums Gaming is complaining about low 40s in Arizona. We're going to have snow tomorrow, and it's wicked cold here in Massachusetts. Round 10, Frazier bringing the pressure, looking to stop Jimmy Young. Young, behind the jab, a 1-2, lands on Frazier. Frazier presses forward. Frazier throws, grazing punches. Young counters with an uppercut. It was a left uppercut and a chopping right hand. Young needs something big. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange. Ring center. Young is not on his toes. He is pivoting with Frazier, trying to keep Frazier at distance with his jab. At the moment, he does. There's a good jab and a right hand by Jimmy Young, but he's going to need a lot more. Frazier gets inside. Frazier bangs the body with a left and a right. Young comes back with a jab and a right hand. Frazier blinks. Frazier might be slowing down. Frazier's a bit fatigued. Young trying to take advantage here. Young hooks to the body and up to the head. The left hook was to the body and the right hand to the head. Frazier looks to come back. Frazier bangs away, forcing Young back to the ropes. Frazier continues to...
to rattle Jimmy Young's ribcage. At the bell, Young ties him up. They wrestle at the ropes. Referee Dave Gardner has to pull them apart. Another round in the books in our eyes. Now that was close. I still give it to Frazier. Both fighters are fatigued. Frazier will have a slight edge in control factor. But W says it's 5 degrees where he's at. Minus 31 with the wind chill yesterday. Holy cow. I'm not going to complain about the 20s or low 30s. Then. Let's go to the ringside score. Round 10 they gave to Jimmy Young. I could see that. It was close. I still gave it to Frazier. We have Frazier well ahead with six more minutes of boxing. Maurice Tatupu in the corner of Jimmy Young. Says, getting late, Jimmy. You got to do something. You got to open up, son. Round 11. There's the bell. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Jimmy Young's trying. Both fighters flurry. Now Frazier ties up. Referee Gardner breaks them as round 11 continues. And Jimmy Young really opening up, heeding the advice of the cornerman, Maurice Tutupu. Bangs away with another solid combination. Jimmy Young wings wildly, misses. Frazier dips, comes up. Right hand, left hook by Joe Frazier. Frazier stays in tight, bangs the body with the left hook twice to the rib cage. Young grabs on, Young breathing heavily. Referee Gardner separates the pugilist. Young looks to come back. Oh, a good combination by Jimmy Young. He rat-a-tats Frazier. But he just doesn't have enough on his punches. Frazier comes back with a left hook to the head and a right to the body. And Young backs up. Young's legs are gone. Young stands his ground with a left right. And there's the bell. After further review with Steve Tower has Frazier well ahead also. Three more minutes. Three more minutes. In our opinion, three more minutes before Joe Frazier will claim the North American Boxing Federation heavyweight title. This title was vacant, but there will be a champion tonight. Bud W says time for Joe to put Jimmy down. Ringside score, 107-102. Frazier gave the last two rounds to Young. Again, I could see that. I didn't, though. I gave it to Frazier. I gave it to the aggressive fight. Final three minutes in the Jimmy Young corner. Maurice Tatupo has told Jimmy, you must knock him out. That's something that Jimmy is not accustomed to, though he did ravage George Foreman in reality. In the heat of Puerto Rico, I believe that was at Roberto Clemente Stadium, 1977, I think. That fight's on YouTube. Good fight to check out if you're a fight fan. I watched a Vinny Pazienza fight at lunch today against Roberto Elizondo. Then I watched Gene Hatcher and Ubaldo Sacco, their first fight, which was tremendous from, from Texas. Then the rematch is in Italy. Uh, Sacco's from Argentina, but they fought that in Italy. And Sacco beat him on cuts in that fight. Here it is, final three minutes. And it's Frazier actually on the outside, winging punches and misses. I don't know if that's a good strategy. And Young comes back with a right hand. A good right hand, but not good enough. Young continues to fire. Young with a another lead right and a left hook to the jaw of Frazier. Why is Frazier on the outside? It is target practice for Jimmy Young. A left and a right by Young. A little too late, maybe. And again, Jimmy Young. Three punches land on Frazier. Left, right, left. All to the head of Smoking Joe Frazier. Frazier backs up. Young slowly presses forward. Behind the jab, he lands the right cross. It's all Jimmy Young here in round 12. Frazier throws a looping right hand that grazes Jimmy Young. Under a minute to go. Young needs a miracle. And this could be it. A left and a right. And there's some swelling near the left eye to go with the bloody mouth for Joe Frazier. Under 30 seconds to go. Jimmy Young firing away at the bell. Frazier looks to throw. Left hook. Body. Head. And there it is. Jimmy Young shoves him away. 
Young goes the distance with Smoking Joe Frazier. He definitely took round 12, but we have Frazier winning the war and the North American Boxing Federation title. Of course, my opinion is purely unofficial. Let's go to the ringside score. Frazier 116-112. Again, unofficial. Let's wait for the chat. If Steve Tower is still with us, he had it 7-3 Frazier after 10. Let's see how he has it at the conclusion of this bout. As the commission collects the scorecards at ringside from the judges and sometimes the three blind mice, once the scorecards are gone over, they will, and explain to, they'll give them the referee Dave Gardner, who will then hand them and explain them to the ringside announcer. And then we will have the announcement here at the Spectrum, which we fully believe, we fully believe Joe Frazier will be victorious and the NABF heavyweight title will be around his waist. After further review with Steve Towers, scores it 7-5 Frazier. So it's a close fight. It's a close fight, folks. In the eyes of Steve. And it could be. It could be. It could, you give around the other way. All right. Let's see. We go to the judges. A unanimous decision. 115-113. 117-111. 116-112. For your winner. And new North American Boxing Federation heavyweight. Champion Smokin' Joe Frazier. So Steve Tower was in line with judge number one, 115, 113. I had it more 117, 111, and then 116, 112. Joe Frazier is the winner. He will now move up the ladder and await a title shot at Gene Tunney or whoever it may be. Maurice Tatupa says, Jimmy started too late. Frazier just too strong for Young. I agree. Bud W. says he lives 35 miles. I think uh, Black Hills. Uh, Bud W. is from the Black Hills. 35 miles away from Mount Rushmore. That's pretty cool, but also pretty cold. So an outstanding evening of boxing. Joe Frazier claims the vacant North American boxing Federation heavyweight title. Tough, tough tussle with Jimmy Young. Though I agree with Jimmy Young's corner man, Maurice Tutupu. Jimmy started a little bit too late. Let's look at the fight report. Yeah, Young took round 10 unanimously. Round 11, 2 out of 3. And round 12 unanimously. So Young was strong down the stretch. After further review with Steve Towers, his nice win for Frazier. So again, very fun game. What I like about this game, and I, I again, I like, I do like tabletop games. What I like about the PC games is when I don't have time to set up stuff, I can quickly play these games and enjoy them. I enjoy all my games, whether tabletop or PC. I enjoy people who play either tabletop or PC. What I like when I watch a YouTuber is the passion they have. The enjoyment. When someone's having fun playing a game, they convey that to their audience. And that's what I like. It makes me enjoy the stream. So, with that, I'd like to say thank you to D. Scott Howard. Thank you to After Further Review with Steve Tower. Check out his wonderful channel. He does a marvelous job. He, does a, he uses a lot of Play.com games. Uh, also other games, but he does a lot of Play.com games. Thank you to Bud W. Stay warm, my friend. Thank you to Maurice Tutupu. This is the first time I believe we've seen Maurice in the chat. It's very fun having you. Hope to see you back soon. As we're all about fun in this community. <clears throat> Dave Little, thank you very much. Check out his wonderful channel. He did a wrestling recap video. I got to check that out. Bleacher Bums Gaming. Our good friend Anthony Crooks, check out his wonderful channel. Of course, Glory Days Boxing, which can be purchased on sidelinestrategies.com. He is the creator of Glory Days Boxing. Again, fabulous game. Fabulous game. Cutter Historical, thank you very much. Check out his wonderful channel. He's doing a project with title about championship boxing, a PC game. 
Excellent game. Continue to scroll up. Smelly Wrestling Geek. Thank you very much, my legal counsel. Thank you for the super chat also. ID Jester, another wonderful content creator, military strategy, sports simming. Mr. Utah Mike, our good friend Sports Time Machine, thank you for the super chat. Please check out and subscribe to his wonderful channel. Richard Butler, thank you. Jeff Ray, thank you very much. Always wonderful that you can make a live show. Sox Arizona, another wonderful content creator. Kurt Berglin, who again, pocket pennant race should be giving him a cut for all the games they're selling. Kurt introduced it to the community. SG, SDG Replays, thank you very much. Check out his wonderful channel. And of course, Jim L. Hope all is well. Thank you, thank you, thank you to one and all. Greatly appreciate everyone's time. Health and happiness. Happy New Year. Belated. God bless. Hug and kiss your loved ones. I know there's COVID factors, but if you can, do so. Because maybe someday you can't. And boy, I wish I could do that with my parents again. Happy birthday, Dad in heaven. It's been two years since we lost you, but you always stay in our hearts. I love you, Mom, and all the other people that we've all lost and they've gone to heaven. We'll see them again someday. I truly believe that. So, Greatly appreciate your time. If you enjoyed the stream, hit the like button. Again, thank you for the super chats. It helps with the channel. Buy some games. Uh, and just thank you, the Smelly Wrestling Geek and... Mr. Utah Mike, Sports Time Machine, and everyone else. Thank you very much for your time. Stay safe. Be smart. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Till next time, I love you all. Peace! See you.